Okay, in this video we're going to talk a little bit about how you could do kink method um, if you have surface information that you've collected while you're in the field. So here I've imagined that I have some topography and down through here. I have places where I've marked my contacts um, and then I don't have any contact information for over here on this hill but I do have a, a strike or a, and a, a dip piece of information. I've got a dip here and a dip here. So in general we know that these letters A, B, C, and D are contacts and that the bed thicknesses must be maintained. And we're going to think about how we might use kink method um, to start putting together this cross section. Now I start my cross sections wherever my data is most dense. So I'm not going to start out over here, one, because I don't have any contact information for this area, but two, I only have one strike and dip symbol, one value that's telling me my, my dip or parent dip for that location, exaggerated apparent dip if you've already exaggerated your topography. But over here, I've got three contacts, I've got two dip symbols, so this is going to be my signal that that's where I should be focusing my first uh, attention and especially because I've got two dips so close together. So that can tell me that I'm changing in my dip domain um, in this area. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to do the, the kink method to find the boundary between my two dip domains, which might be somewhere around this letter C. So I'm going to take my compass and I'm going to measure the horizontal distance between these two points. So to do that, I'm just going to make sure that my compass is lined up horizontal across my paper. I'm going to measure the distance between these two. It's about 1.2 centimeters. So I'm going to put a tick at wherever I am on the surface that's 0 0.6 centimeters between the two. Again, I just divided 1.2 centimeters by two. Now on this side of this little point, I'm going to mimic the dip of this dip. So you can measure that out. For me, since I'm just going to do this quickly, I'm going to use my compass, or sorry, my protractor and just estimate. So again, this line is parallel to that line. I'm going to come over here and do the same thing. Actually, let me go ahead and continue this up. Come over here, I'm going to do the same thing. Okay, so that and that are parallel. Okay, now we know that we, are, we need to bisect um, an angle here, but let's think this through. If we bisect this narrow angle, and we know that our dips have to come up or, and, and meet that angle, that gives me a really weird little anticline here. And that would mean that I had, if I'm looking at, at this data over here too, that would mean that I had somehow missed some kind of a weird syncline and anticline before getting back over here. I think the simpler explanation is that we need to choose a different angle to bisect. Okay, so instead of bisecting this angle, we're going to bisect this obtuse angle. I do, for, for bisecting angles, I recommend measuring out your angle and dividing by 2. So here I get 155, so I'm going to come over to 72, let's see, 150. Half of 150 is 75. So half of 155 is 77.5. Right. Hopefully that's right. If it's not, somebody can correct me. And that'll be just fine. Okay, so going from this point, I'm going to measure out here. And that's my angle bisector. So this angle and that angle should be about the same. Okay, and I'm going to measure this just to be sure. Nope, 
because I put a tick mark in the wrong place. No, I didn't. I just didn't trace it out to the right tick mark. I was going to say, that did not look right. Trace it out to here. See, even your structure professors make mistakes every once in a while. All right, so that's my bisector. This is the angle that divides my dip domains. So I've got a dip domain over here that's similar to this, and a dip domain over here similar to that. Let's erase all of this extra information. Now, if your professor wants you to keep it, one thing that you can do that I think is great is take pictures or um, make a copy of your work before you start adding to it. If you do that, then you can kind of retrace your steps um, just in case you find that maybe you don't like the work you did. Okay, now I'm going to zoom in here on this part. On this side, I am in this dip domain. So I'm actually going to start with B here. I'm going to take from this contact, I'm going to drop a line down. And that line is parallel to this dip. I'm going to do the same thing with A. So keeping it parallel. Do it like that. And same thing with C. C is a little bit harder to see because it's so close. Okay. Now, over here, I'm in this dip domain. So let's go ahead and on this side, follow. Let's see. I'm going to cross right there. Follow that dip domain. Okay. And then I've got this unit D over here. So what you're going to do with D is move this line out even farther. And going from D on this side, again, this is our dip domain. And when we move on to this side, this other value is our dip domain. Very good. So now let's contend with this other piece of dip information I have over here. I'm going to do the same thing that I just did. I'm going to measure halfway between my dips. Um, and I get 8.5 centimeters. So half of 8.5 is 4.25. Move that right up onto my surface. And on this side, I'm going to mimic this dip. Double check. Good. And on this side, I'm going to mimic this dip. Okay, and now I'm going to bisect that angle, and I'm just going to kind of erase this just a little bit so I can bisect this a little bit easier. Okay, measure this out. I get 60. Half of 60 is 30. Put a tick mark. And for this one, I'm going to extend this far above the surface. I know I've got some units dipping up over here. They might want to meet that surface. Okay. And now I'm going to erase this because it's not a guideline. Those were just lines I made to help me figure out what to do um, with my angle, with my bisector. Okay. So let's go ahead and finish out this cross section. We're going to carry A, B, and C contacts, maybe even D if we've got the space. Carry those up to the boundary of that dip domain. And we should see 
um, that the bed thicknesses are maintained. Okay, I can't zoom out anymore, so I'm sorry if that's not a great angle for you. Um, so see what I mean by like D would just go, D would go so far up there that we wouldn't really catch all of that. Now on this side, we're going to mimic this dip. So come over here to your A, we're going to start at this intersection point, and moving at the same dip as over here, we're going to come down uh, oh, just like that. And again, if you're if you're new to this, you are totally fine to be measuring all these angles. It's probably a better move anyway. Um, I'm not doing it just for the speed of the video. Okay, so here we've got a nice big fold, comes down. Um, one thing that you can do, I don't have any contacts in here between these two A's. So I like to add, especially if I know I'm working in sedimentary rock, add an extra dashed line under the surface to just help me think about how this fold might change. So I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna make an extra little dashed area down here. I know that it's gonna be subsurface because we haven't, we haven't um, crossed any more contacts down here. But this is just going to help me think about how this fold is changing shape with depth. Okay, there you go. And eventually, see how these two dip domains cross? Eventually, you could, this is covered in another video, I'm just going to do this really rough, you can find their intersection and bisect that, and when you get to that point, that is your heads up, that at this point down here you're just going to probably go something like that, okay? I'm, that's not really maintaining bed thickness, so have to work through that a little bit differently, but just know that once you get to this point where they intersect, you're going to have some changes down here. All right, um, so that is how you would do this, and if you're in my class um, this semester, you're using your own field data to make your own cross-sections, you should expect um, to have similar issues to what I've shown here. Thank you.